the bread of life. He's all those things. And he, he is the author of salvation. And that's how we're brought into the family of God, by believing in the works and what Jesus Christ did and said and trusting in the word of God. But he's also not just the uh, author of our faith. He is also the finisher. Look at Philippians now. Flip over to Philippians chapter 1, if you will. Philippians chapter 1. I want to begin in verse 2. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you always in every prayer of mine for you all making request with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from uh, the first until now. Being confident. He said, I want you to be confident of this very thing that he that began a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. He will keep on working on us, whether we like it or not, and he is trying to finish us and bring us into that conformity unto Christ and what Christ taught us and to live that way. Matthew uh, Matthew 5, 16 said, let your good works uh so shine that men may see your good works. Let your light so shine that men may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. That means that God, I love uh, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, but many times we should also include verse 10. For by grace are you saved through faith that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. We're the the salvation is a free gift, and we don't do anything to get a gift. We just uh, believe that we have one and ask and receive that gift from God. But verse 10 goes on to say, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Uh, Ephesians, I mean, uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says this, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things, uh, all things uh, pass away, and, and all things are becoming new to us. After we're saved, God doesn't quit there, does he? He is, uh, we get saving grace, and we get sustaining grace, and thank God he'll even give us dying grace. And he's going to be with us, working in us uh, until we're out of this world. And there's no more uh, working for uh, God then. Look at uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 6, if, if you will. Just giving you some verses to, to help us remember that God is the way. If you read Romans 7 and 8, you see in chapter 7, Paul says that, uh, that we'll go there next before I misquote it. Well, let's look at, before we go there, let's look at Hebrews chapter 6, uh, beginning in verse 1. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrines of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works, and of faith towards God, and of the doctrine of baptisms, and of laying on of hands, and of uh, the resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. And this we will do uh, if God permit. For it is impossible for those who once uh, enlightened, who were once enlightened, and have tasted the heavenly gift and were uh, made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the power of the word to come if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. 
many, many of the false doctrine uh, people that do not believe in once saved, always saved, try to use this verse to prove that you can fall away. But that's not what uh, the English language is telling us. It says it is impossible for those that were once saved, if they fall away, if they could fall away, to renew them again. Because Christ would have to be crucified all over again. Jesus died for the sin of the world. And uh, there's no way we can lose it and then get it back. In fact, in the, the book of John, John chapter 3, let's flip over there right quick. John chapter 3, one of the, the parts of the scripture that I use to talk to people that have trouble believing uh, that Jesus saved us and he'll keep us and we cannot lose it. And in verse uh, chapter 3, uh, beginning in verse 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee except a man be born of water and of the spirit he cannot see the kingdom of God that which is born of flesh is flesh and that which is born of spirit is spirit marvel not that I said unto thee ye must be born again that's the way that God completes salvation and he adopts us into the family of God and we're born again spiritually. His spirit comes into our soul and joins with our spirit uh, like a mother. Uh, uh, the, her seed and uh, the man's seed comes together in her womb and they join together. And that it becomes a new creation, a new man. And that's what happened to every one of us. And, and that spirit is joined Permanently, that's why he says that we're born again. Can you ever be unborn? Now, the, the principles of law tell us that you can disown your own children and uh, kick them out of your family. But if you uh, adopt a child, they are permanently in your family because you put it in writing. And God did both. He birthed us into the family of God by his spirit, making us a spiritual creation of his. And not only that, but in uh, Ephesians, we're, we're brought into that family also by the spirit of adoption, meaning that he's telling us once we're saved, we're always saved. Once we're born, we're always born. Once uh, we begin to uh, follow God, He's with us and he'll never leave us or forsake us at all. He's the author and finisher of our faith. And he that began a work in you is going to continue working in you until uh, we uh, pass away from uh, this world and these bodies until we receive a brand new body, a different body, a heavenly body that never grows over and never will die. You cannot lose salvation, friend. You can't because he is the finisher. He is the one that saves us and he's the one that keeps us saved. That's what he says now unto God that is able to keep uh, me from falling and to present me before his glory, before that throne of God, before that throne of judgment of God. He's going to pre present me before himself faultless. Now, are any of us faultless? But God's going to make us faultless. And he does that by applying the righteousness to Christ. He takes away our sin and he gives us the righteousness of Jesus Christ as a free gift. Just like in the, in the garden when Adam and Eve sinned, they tried to hide their sin with fig leaves. And God said, that's not good enough. Your works will not save you. You can't be religious and repent enough 
for me to save you I, without the shedding of blood there's no remission and he kills animals I believe it was lambs and he made them coats to cover them from head to toe but in in uh, Romans chapter 5 he tells us that we uh, put on the righteous robe of Jesus Christ as a covering then when God looks upon you and I he sees the righteousness of Jesus Christ Amen. he put our sin and cast it behind his back as far as uh, the east is from the west and he buried it in the deepest part of the sea he buried it down in hell and when he came up out of the grave he didn't have our sin no more he had the glory of God still because uh, it could not hold him. He's the author of everything. And uh, when you're born again, he puts you in that book of life, records your birth. And uh, in 1 John chapter 2, uh, it tells us a little more about that. 1 John chapter, is it 2 or 3? It's chapter 3, excuse me. Chapter 3 and verse uh, 20. The Bible says, all right, let me start in 19. And hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure, blessed assurance, our hearts before him. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and uh, knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, we have confidence towards God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. If our own heart, now my heart's convinced me many times that I still was, was a sinner and I still sin and, I, and I'm not, like Jesus Christ yet. I have faults and sins and those things in my life and I don't deserve heaven. But if our own heart condemn us, if we feel like we're not saved, God is greater than our hearts and cannot deny himself. The, the Spirit of God still has joined in, in our, uh, with our spirit and we're still the children of God by adoption. And he never can deny himself when you have the Spirit of God dwelling in you. And that's how we're kept by the Spirit of God. And we never can lose that salvation. Now, we can get to a point and we're crippled and, and uh, our hearts condemned us and we give up and don't believe with, that we're saved, we can destroy our testimony. We can destroy our fellowship with God. We can destroy our rewards for serving God. That's what the judgment seat of, uh, or the Bema seat of Christ is all about, where we read in, in uh, uh, John, uh, 1 Corinthians 5 and 2 Corinthians uh, three is the judgment of believers. And in that judgment, the only thing that is burned up are what? Our works, our good works, the things that we uh, did for God and we did it for the wrong reason and the wrong way and trying to receive glory for ourselves and not give the glory uh, to God. We can do that and we can destroy our testimony with sin but Romans 4 says God doesn't let's turn to Romans 4 right quick try to get this completed I didn't have that down on my list but it's too good to pass up Romans uh, chapter 4 verse 1 what shall we say then that Abraham our father pertaining to the flesh hath found for if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scriptures? Uh, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted uh, unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is a reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. If you're trying to work your way to heaven, 
you think you owe God stuff and, and that's the only way you're going to make it. You're trying to keep yourselves saved by doing everything God wants us to do. That won't work. Verse 5. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness, even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works. God gives us his own righteousness out of faith and not by works that we do. And continue on. Uh, blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is uh, the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. He doesn't count sin no more. For as God's concerned, our sins are gone. Our past sins, our present sins, our future sins, they're all gone. They're paid for. Uh, John, John uh, uh, the Baptist said about Jesus, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Sin is not in the picture. Not for salvation, not for service, not for judgment. Sin is never brought up. He said, I'll never remember your sin again. He does remember our works, however. And he looks at us, warning us to do good works in the world so we are more convincing with our testimony. If we don't act like we're saved and talk like we're saved and, and uh, be what we should be in Christ, then our testimony is not as believable. But if we were once uh, down and outers, sinners to the most, and uh, doing all the wrong things and changed, it makes an impression on people's lives. They want to know what? Change your life. What is that power? It's a knowledge of salvation and it's the work of the Holy Spirit. The, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace with God and peace of God. He gives us the fruit of the Spirit working in our lives to transform us. Uh, Romans 12 said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to uh, this world, but be it transformed by the renewing of your mind. God wants to transform, save people, and that make them, transform them more in the image of Jesus Christ. So that we should uh, be worthy of being called Christians, which means Christ-like. And we should be working towards becoming that and allow God to work in that. But Romans 7, Paul said, those things which I would do, I don't do. And those things which I shouldn't do, I find myself doing. Uh, and I find within me in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. But in chapter 8, he tells us that the Spirit of God changes us and leads us and guides us, transforms us to be more like Jesus Christ. God has to work in us, transforming us. It's his work, not our work. You can't make yourself be better. God can transform us in our heart and make us desire the right things and do the right things and be the right witness. He's given to us to lead and guide us into all truth and to testify to people what uh, we need to for them to have the knowledge of the truth and be born again of the Spirit of God and become members of God's family. And God wants to change every one of us and Paul said, I can't do it in my flesh. Well, it's no good thing. But in chapter 8 of Romans, everything is by surrendering to the Spirit of God and doing what the Spirit of God 
leads us to do and he'll give us the power to do it. I was so timid in school, I would never stand up and talk before people or anything else. But God changes me. He changed me uh, in many, many ways. Now, I still have besetting sins. We all do. And we all have weights, things that weight us down that we can't do as much as we could have done. But we can still do as much as God will help us accomplish in this world. And we have to depend upon His grace that teaches us. We, we read that in Titus. Uh, Titus, let's, let's see, that was Titus chapter... Chapter 3, I believe, if I can find it. Right before Hebrews. <clears throat> In chapter 2 and verse 11, it starts this way. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteous, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of that great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. By the way, he says he's, a, he's our great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And he's teaching us that to live righteously and soberly and godly in this present world. He never stops doing that. And we should be, uh, he said there in verse 14, uh, a peculiar people zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. That's what he tells us about uh, that portion of us. In, Rome, in uh, John, 1 John chapter 3, he said, be, uh, be, Behold what love God hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the uh, sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, be, uh, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons, sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. The Spirit of God's teaching us, leading us, guiding us, helping us, giving us love and joy and peace, long-suffering, gentleness, all that is the working of the spirit of grace in our lives inwardly to try to bring uh, outwardly uh, a godly, righteous people. Peculiar, it says. Do you friends uh, that knew you way back when, did they think you're peculiar? They think we're crazy. I look at this world and I know they're crazy. I love what it says, and, and this is the warning I want to leave you with. 1 John 12, uh, I mean John 12, not John 12, John chapter 1 and verse 12. I'll get it right. John chapter 1 and verse uh, 12 gives us a little more about that. The Bible says, but... In verse 12, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born, not of blood, it's not passed down from mama and daddy, nor the will of the flesh. You can't make yourself saved. Nor the will of man. A man can't baptize you and pronounce you saved. A man and... And a church can't make your salvation real to you. They don't have the power of salvation. But who does? But of God. He's the author 
but he's also the finisher of our faith. If you will, turn over to 2 Peter chapter 2. And we'll close, I think, with this. I got a lot of other scriptures, but I want to leave with this thought. 2 Peter chapter 2 and beginning in uh, verse 20. Verse 20, chap 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 20. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of, of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and are again entangled therein and overcome in the latter end uh, overcome the latter end is worse with them than in the beginning for it had been better for them not to have known the right way of, uh, uh, the way of righteousness than after uh, they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them, but it has happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog is returned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. God's uh, letting us know that if the spirit of grace is working in our heart, and we decide we don't want to serve God. We don't want to do the right thing. We are determined to do the wrong thing. God says to us that he'll give us up to our own uh, desires. And the end of our lives would be worse than if we had never known and been born again into God's family. Because God will strive with us until we totally, uh, totally turn away. And uh, it's kind of like I used to say to the kids in children's church. I told them, now you be good examples to one another of how to behave yourself in church. And if you won't behave and only determined to do wrong and disrupt, then I'll make an a, uh, example of you. I'd rather be an example of for God than to, for God to make an example of me. Usually the older brother was the one that caught all the heat for not being the right example. But before God, God wants us to be uh, righteous and holy and godly in this present world. And if we won't do that and uh, we make ourselves a shame uh, to God and God ashamed of us God will just leave us to ourselves now are we lost no but we sure can lose our reward and our testimony and and lose an abundant life that God can give us by going back to the world that we came out of and uh, there's some that have done that but God's desire is for us to live and do the right thing, be a great uh, testimonies of the power of God working in us. He wants to transform our lives. And all the glory goes to God. I, I tell them on the street all the time, the reasons Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says it's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. God doesn't want nobody up in heaven saying, well, I was better than you. I won more souls than you, and I lived a more godly life than, than you did, and I did more things for God than you ever thought about doing. Nobody's going to be boasting of themselves in heaven. Everyone will boast about what Jesus Christ did for us, in us. He's the one that transforms us. He's the one that gives us power to become the sons of God in the midst of a lost and dying world. It's all the glory of God. And when we get to heaven and uh, we're all going to be lifting up one person, Jesus Christ, Savior of the world, that's who's going to get the glory 
in heaven. Not us. Everyone will boast of God. Amen? So, we just need to look to God. I said this morning again, we need to count our blessings every morning, remind ourselves what God wants us to be, and then we need to ask God to give us more power to become what he wants us to become so that God gets the glory, not us. Amen? Father, we thank you for uh, this book and teaching us and guiding us and leading us and we do pray, God, that you will con convict and convince us of your will in our lives. Lead, guide, and direct us into truth. Give us uh, your power uh, to uh, transform our lives uh, for your honor and your glory. And, uh, Father, I pray that you just be with us today in a, in a, a real way and work in our hearts and give us more power more praise, more joy, more love, more patience than we've ever had before. Help us to keep ourselves busy in trying to win souls uh, to a saving knowledge of your salvation. Go with us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.